you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there may be also. And where I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not what thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man come unto the Father, no man come unto the Father but by me. Thank God for these six verses of St. John in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's bless God as the praise team come forward and take us further. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord. You can do better than that. Come on and let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's get on our feet and let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's think about what he's done for us this week and let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, just think about what he has done for you. Hallelujah. How he has changed your life this week. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to sing some old school songs. Hallelujah. Come on, let's clap our hands. Hallelujah.
young lady called me out of the blue. I did not know who she was from Michigan. She called crying and said that she was about to let it all go. She was sitting in a sitting in the car, said she'd been living in the car with her baby. She asked me, said she, I called because it was a prayer line. Someone told me this prayer line. I said, no, baby, it's not a prayer line, but what do you need? I said, do you want me to pray for you? She said, yes, I would like for you to pray for me. So I prayed. I did what I was supposed to do. Now, mind you, I wasn't going to answer this phone because I thought it was scam, scam lightly. And so when I prayed for her, hallelujah, she asked for some money. I said, well, I don't have none. I waited about 10, 15 minutes, went on and sent her some anyway. About an hour later, she called me, said she was in her shelter. I said, well, that's good. She said, you know what? When you prayed for me, I had a pan full of pills that I was about to take. And I was about to take my own life. She said, but when you was praying for me, I threw those pills out the window. Hallelujah. And so I just almost lost it, but I was at an event, so I couldn't be in there shouting at an event. But I almost lost it because she called the wrong person at the right time. Hallelujah. It's all God, hallelujah. He just made me to be obedient and just pick up the phone for this young lady. It could have been a lost life, her and her child, hallelujah. But again, she called the wrong person at the right time, hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord. He saved her life. He saved her life. Come on and praise the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord. He's been too good. He's been too good. He's been too good. He's been too good. Come on and praise the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord. Come on and praise the Lord. Everybody give God praise right now. Come on, everybody in the house, give God praise right now. Stand with me, everybody. Hallelujah, and come and meet me at the altar. What a powerful testimony. God sparing lives. Come on, come on, walk while I'm talking. I got a phone call. Hey, Shanama this week and some of you may know Pastor Kenshin um, he and his wife and family worshipped here when they first moved from Florida and then they um, settled in Charlotte and they have a church work there and I think this was around early February when Sister Kenshin called me in my, yeah, late January, early February to tell me that Pastor Kinchin was in the hospital with a heart with a heart situation, and they were preparing to move this relatively young man to hospice because it appeared as if there was nothing else they could do for him. 
um, I don't advertise stuff like this. I just do it. And I went to the hospital, and I didn't know his wife was recording me praying for him. But somebody may have seen the video, and I'm in ICU praying for Pastor Kinchin. And he called me. We talked yesterday, and he said, Bishop, I want you to know I'm doing so much better. He's out of the hospital. He's at home. Come on, somebody. He's gone back to church. And hallelujah. Saints, prayer changes things. Anybody believe that? Prayer changes things. Hashatama satayeshiyama. I dare you to have a condition and give it to God. Give it to God. Give it. To he said, in a little while, we're going to get together and we're going to come. We're going to bring our whole congregation to refuge just to say thank you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And I know I wasn't the only one praying, but I'm so glad that God hears. Come on, somebody. The, the most important thing you need to know is God hears you right now. I don't know what it is, and the devil wants you to believe that God is not listening to you, but the devil is a liar. God hears what is on your heart, and God is hearing your prayer, and God is going to answer your prayer. I, I, I just feel like somebody's at the point of breakthrough. Hallelujah. You've been wrestling with something for a minute, and some days it got the best of you, but the Lord has brought you to this moment, and you are at the moment of breakthrough. Hey, hallelujah. Look at somebody, tell them, my situation is about to change. Hey, ah. hallelujah. You don't have to know the story. But just know God's about to change. Hey, God, God's about to change it for me, for me, for me, for me. Father, in Jesus' name, we love you. We adore you. We honor you. We glorify your name for your goodness and for your mercy. Lord, your people are standing before your throne because we need you to touch. We need you to deliver. We need you to heal. We need you to save. We need you to restore. We need you to revive. We need you to wash and to cleanse. Lord, have your way right now. Be glorified in this place. Be exalted, my God, in this place. Lord, touch somebody right now. There's a miracle about to happen in our midst. There's a breakthrough about to happen in our midst. Oh, God, there's a release about to happen in our midst. I feel it in my spirit, God, that there's somebody you're about to deliver today. So stretch out your hand. Open up heaven for us. Minister to every need and every situation. Lord, feed us right now from your table give us the word that touches give us the word that delivers in the mighty name of jesus and we love you now and we praise you now and we worship you now lord have your way god have your way god have your way god and we give your name the glory the honor and praise in jesus name come on and give god praise everybody right now come on bless them everybody right now Come on, honor him right now. God bless you. You can return to your seats, get your Bibles, and stand with me for the reading of the word from the Gospel of St. Matthew. Hallelujah. Chapter number 26. St. Matthew chapter 26. And... We'll begin reading at verse number six. And while you're turning, I want to celebrate. This is Women's History Month. And I want to celebrate all the history makers of Refuge Temple. Come on, let's thank God for the women of Refuge Temple. Okay, y'all can do better than that. You must have your Bibles in your hand. Let's thank God for the women of Refuge Temple. Our sisters, our wives, our mothers. Oh, come on, come on, celebrate them, celebrate them. 
they are a blessing to this church and we thank God and I could spend all day talking about the tremendous things that the women of this church has done. I am going to recognize one because she's a colleague and I'm excited for her because she was a finalist for assistant principal of the year for Durham Public Schools, Sister Tammy Patterson. Let's thank God for her. Didn't know until it was my time to vote, and I voted for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I voted for you because I'm proud of her work as an educator and proud that she's a member of our church family. St. Matthew chapter 26 and verse number 6. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, to what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, what, why trouble ye the woman? For she have wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. Before you take your seat, tell somebody, no more bargain basement worship. God bless you. You can be seated. No more bargain basement worship. One of the most challenging spirits in the church is the spirit of selfishness. And before you get nervous, this is not a message about money because there are more ways to be selfish than with your money. But selfishness, spirit of self, is too often a part of the culture of the church. It's a spirit that places self-interest in front of our interest in God. And it creates a mentality that we believe we are on the same priority level as God. Now, if I asked you, do you think you and God are on the same level, everybody in here would say, oh no, oh no, I know God is greater. But the actions speak louder than our words. And we sometimes, in too many cases, act as if we are in competition with God, when in reality there is no competition. God is always going to be greater. And one of the challenges of the church at this moment in time is for the church to exalt God as we should, for the church to lift God up. I wonder sometimes, and, and, and I, I do and I don't, why more people are not saved. And one of the primary reasons why more people are not saved is because the saved people don't talk about God enough. We don't celebrate God enough. We honor our rituals, we honor our habits and the things that we do but the true excitement about the fact that I know God. Anybody here know God? There ought to be a buzz in the room because we know God. There ought to be an excitement moving among us because I'm assuming you didn't just meet God yesterday. Come on, somebody. I'm assuming that you've been with God all week. Now, we haven't seen each other, per se, unless it's been in Bible class since last Sunday, but you've had all week to spend time with God. You've had all week to celebrate God. 
don't, don't, don't lie, but how many of you gave God praise this week and you weren't in church? Come on, somebody. Just thank God. Just thank God. Just celebrating God's goodness. And, and, and so when we get together, come on, somebody, and you bring your love for God, and I bring my love for God, it ought to be almost explosive. Come on, somebody. Because everybody in here claims that we love God. But you know, in the midst of love, the love that we have shared or offered or given to God, there's also been, if I could be honest, an emphasis on self. We have ignored sometimes worship just so we could sleep extra few minutes. Come on, somebody. We have ignored our prayer time just so we could have a little more time to watch March Madness. Come on, somebody. We have um, engaged ourselves in some other activities that sometimes took us away from the celebration of God. And, and, and that's why when we come together, we need to be about the business of worship. Come on, somebody. Because the most important thing, I don't know if you realize this or not, that a believer does is give glory back to God. It's, it's more important than our hand clapping is more important than our foot stomping is more important, hallelujah, than hallelujah, what we do in the service and teaching Sunday school and everything else. But if we came to glorify God, we ought to be about the business of giving God the glory. So I, I, I'm going to give us one more time. Anybody here came to worship God, came to celebrate God, came to honor God, came to exalt God, came to draw attention to God, to Take attention off myself and put it on God not to be consumed with what I've just and who I am but I came to glory oh, see y'all done quit already y'all done clap for about 20 seconds and clipped and stopped already but anybody come to glorify the name of has he been that good to you that it's worth the time it's worth the effort it's worth the moment it's worth the minute to give God the glory Come on, tell somebody on your road. The most important thing we do is glorify God. The most important thing we do is glorify God. I'm not trying to hype you. I'm not trying to hype you. Hallelujah. But if we're not going to give God the glory, there's no purpose in us even being together. Come on, somebody. I love y'all. I like to see you. But if all we're going to do is just sit here and look at each other and God gets no glory, we have wasted time, energy, clothes, gas, and everything else. If we're going to come together, it ought to be, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Didn't come to see, didn't come to be seen, but I came to give God the glory. Worship is an important spiritual principle because it removes you from self interest. Because you can't be engaged in true worship and the focus be just on you. And that's why I, 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 I'm not gonna say we don't make a lot of noise in churches, but everything is not true worship. Because unless the focus is on God, we are in violation of the first commandment. First commandment is thou shalt have what? No other God before me. Nobody else can be, can take the place that I occupy in your life, saith the Lord. And the only way you know that is that you give God things that only belong to him. Come on, somebody. Lady Davis is my wife. And so there are things I have done for her and given to her that I have never given to another woman. We had an anniversary and we were in New York and we went by this very expensive jewelry store. 
I mean, very expensive. And I must have been in love that day. Because I bought a ring. My God, I won't even tell you. But no other woman, if another woman tells you that Bishop Davis bought her a ring, they lie. Unless it's Geneva. I have bought her a ring. Because there are some things you only do for those people that are special in your life. The only person that gets a hallelujah out of me is God. Come on, somebody. Don't nobody else get a hallelujah. You might get a thank you if I like what you did. But the only one that gets a hallelujah, which is praise the Lord, is God. The only one that gets a hosanna, save us, we pray, is God. And there are certain things about your expression as a person that belongs only to God. And um, in too many cases, our worship is an expression and a reflection of the selfishness that many people possess. You know, one of the things we grapple with on a regular basis is people bringing negative attitudes into sacred space. I'm going to say that again because some of y'all are looking at me funny. It's wrong to bring a negative attitude into sacred space. This space is supposed to be all about worship. And when you come into this space, rolling your eyes, sucking your teeth, acting as if somebody owes you, you're bringing a negative attitude. Then you walk out the church saying, oh, it was dry today. You know why it was dry? Because you brought that negative attitude into sacred space. The reason why we have altar prayer before we open worship is so that each of us can deal with our attitude. Because maybe nothing anybody did here caused the attitude. And if you're like me, most of your aggravation happens right before you get ready to go to church. Has there been anybody besides me? You're trying to get ready, you're trying to get dressed, and the phone rings, or you get this little crazy text, or any other things. And it's all designed by the devil to take you off the mindset that when I get to the house of God, the only thing I should be focused on is giving God the glory. Hallelujah. That's why, that, and I'll be honest, there's some days I got to pray spirits off of me. Y'all say, Bishop, you got, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have a negative spirit in me, but they can get on me. I wish I had an honest witness in here. The stress of the day, the stress of family, the stress of work, it can rise up on you as you're getting ready to go to the house of God. And the Lord is telling you, don't bring any of that to me. If you're going to come in my presence, bring it to me so I can fix it. Don't bring it so you can hold on to it. Don't bring it so you can wallow in it. But if you're going to bring it, bring it so I can fix it so that you can get Give me the glory. We bring a misguided mentality because we think that worship is just about the music, just about the song, and just about the emotional expression of the dance. And sadly for some people, and this is what sometimes aggravates sincere people. We've seen too many people do what they do for show. Can I be honest about that? I, I've been in church for 50 years and I have seen more shows that I thought I was on Broadway. Come on somebody. Because it, it was so orchestrated and so planned and so put together and, and I'm not saying we shouldn't rehearse and prepare, we should do all of that. But we ought to be open to the spontaneity of the Spirit. I like it when the Holy Ghost tears up the program. Come on, somebody. I planned one thing. I wrote down my little notes. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I prepared myself mentally for what I had to do. And then the Holy Ghost showed up. 
and said, you know what? Because I'm smarter than you, I'm going to take over this service. Come on, somebody. I'm going to take over this song. I'm going to take over this worship because the Holy Ghost always knows better what the people need rather than ourselves. When we start presuming that we know better than the Holy Ghost, we have taken ourselves to another level. But I love being able to throw my hands up and say, have your way, Lord. Hey, Shataya Shanalabosa. Somebody throw your hand up and say, have your way, Lord. See, this public show of worship removes the glory out of our midst. Because the Lord said, I will not give my glory to another. And that's why sometimes the people that have the most talent have the least anointing. Because they're riding on their talent. They're riding on their expertise. They're riding on their training. And sometimes God just wants raw worship. Practice, but don't lose your mind because you have a bad note as long as it's real. Come on, somebody. Study preachers, but don't get angry if your notes don't correspond with what you say because sometimes God has something he wants to say. And sometimes he doesn't give you the benefit. Now, I love it when the Lord tells me what to write, what to say, what to prepare, but I'm also open to the fact that at any moment in the message, God can say something that needs to be said. I love the logos, but I love rhema. Come on, somebody. That means it came straight from God, didn't come out of my imagination, didn't come out of my reading or my study, because I still believe what the word says. Let him that hath an ear hear what the spirit says unto the church. I know I'm up here preaching, but I rather you hear from the Holy Ghost today than to hear from Reginald Davis. I would rather you hear a word from the Lord than to hear a sermon from the pastor because the word, the sermon from the pastor may not get you through Tuesday, but the word of God oh God, the grass withers the flower fadeth, but the word of our God will stand forever. Probably the most challenging element that we deal with is that in so many cases, our worship lacks sacrifice. And you can't know Jesus and not be open to sacrifice. We have become such a body of convenience that when it suits me I'll offer God worship when I feel good I'll offer God worship when my homostasis is in sync I'll give God the glory but God needs your ugly worship I don't feel good today but because you're worthy, I'm going to worship you. I've got some stuff that is bothering me. But what is bothering me is not more important than you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So I'm here, so I'm, I'm going to give you the glory. I'm going to give you the honor. There's somebody sitting on my row that's getting on my nerves. But I didn't come here to be fixated about who's sitting on my row. I came to offer God what belongs to him. And there's nothing more important at this moment. I'm a shy person. I'm reserved. I'm not emotional. But God you've been so good to me that I've just got to say something. I've just got to do something. I've just got to offer you something. Despite the pain in my body, despite the depression in my mind, despite the grief in my spirit, I still know you're worthy. So I'll open my mouth and I'll give you the glory. I need somebody to press past what you're feeling right now and give 
give God the worship that you know he deserves. I need somebody in here that doesn't feel good that will say this is a sacrifice of praise. I've had a bad day. I've had a bad week. I've had a bad year. But God is still good. So I offer him That's how you get the curse off of you. When you get home, read that 24th chapter of 2 Samuel where David has sinned and God brought a plague onto Israel that was sweeping all the way through Israel. And the Lord said, if you want me to lift the plague, David, you gotta offer a sacrifice. And so he goes to a man and says, I need your oxen so I can sacrifice to the Lord. And the man, oh God, offered it for free. David said, no, I gotta pay for it. How can I give God something that costs me nothing? And you can't give God something that doesn't cost you. You gotta be willing to give God something. It might cost some energy. It might cost some money. It might cost some time. But I can't give God something that costs me nothing. What is your worship? Worship when you feel good is cheap worship. Same way folks dance at the club because they feel good. You dance in church because you feel good. But it's when you can dance when you feel bad. That's what the Bible calls the sacrifice of praise. And I hear the Holy Ghost saying, if you want me to move something out of your life, you need to give me the sacrifice of praise. Not the praise that you feel, but the praise that you don't feel. Somebody in the house, let's give God the sacrifice. Sit down for a second. Let me deal with this text. Hey! Oh, God. I hear the Holy Ghost tell somebody your deliverance is going to come through sacrifice. Oh, my God. Your deliverance is going to come through sacrifice. If you can step out of your flesh, if you can step out of your emotions, if you can step out of your feelings and say, God, because it's you, I'm going to offer you the sacrifice. You know what I hear the Holy Ghost saying? He didn't ask you how you felt. He didn't ask you how you felt. In fact, he knows how you feel. And he knows what you're dealing with. But that's how you move yourself from the flesh to the spirit. When you can crucify your emotions. Because you know what? Even feelings are flesh including your feelings. I, I know you think all your feelings are spiritual, but they ain't. Some of your feelings are just pure flesh. Come on, somebody. And you got to press past your feelings to carry out the will of God for your life. Let's deal with the text. Sit down for a second. Sit down, sit down. Savior. In this text, Jesus was in the home of someone who was healed. Simon the leper. And what makes worship special is when it comes from people that the Lord has blessed. You know, I, I, I wish, and I may go back to testimony service. Because testimony service established the paradigm for why we were here. When person after person got up and said, I thank God for being here. 
well, they said first giving honor to God, the pastor, saints, and friends. I thank God for being here. And then they tell you a story about how they almost weren't here. I was in a day where I was trying to do two appointments in one day, and I was in Augusta, Georgia, um, Saturday morning, and I was on my way to Camden, North Carolina for Sunday evening. And I'm giving that little car all it could take to get me from one place to another. And we're outside of, of Bishopsville, South Carolina, and the inside of my rear tire disintegrated. The inside of the tire. Outside, it looked fine, but when I turned it over, the whole inside was ripped from one end to the other. And you know, when tires blow, anything can happen. Come on, somebody. And I could have been calling y'all from the hospital in Florence or from the funeral home in Florence because I, I was with Lady Davis. Any one of us could have been killed. Hardly, because people do ordinary things and unusual things happen. That's why you don't take for granted going from point A to point B. If the Lord brought you, if it was around the corner, you should have got out the car and said, thank you, Jesus. So Jesus is in the home of a man who was a leper that he healed. And a woman, and they're sitting down, they're having dinner, they're eating, and you know that Jesus had three close friends, and they were Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And by this time, Jesus had already raised Lazarus from the dead. But Mary, and Mary was that special one. Mary just had this spirit where Martha wanted to serve chicken and food and make sure that everybody ate, but Mary just wanted to worship. Come on, somebody. And, and, and I know all of us ought to be engaged in church work, but I think there are some of us here assigned to worship. Come on, somebody. That, that, that's what we do. You may never hold an office. You may never occupy a position. You may never have a title, but maybe God has anointed you to worship. Come on, somebody. You the person that gets on everybody's nerves because it doesn't matter what the service is doing. You find a way to say hallelujah. They say, we're going to read the announcements. Hallelujah. They say, we're going to taste the offering. Hallelujah. They say, we're going to walk around the church. Hallelujah. Because you've been assigned to worship. People look at you funny. They, you get on the nerves of people everybody don't like sitting beside you but there are some of us that have been anointed by God and it's not just the folk holding the microphone it's people that the Lord has blessed that you just wave that hand because you know there's a story behind the waving of your hand you just leap for joy and there's a story behind your leap has the Lord been good to anybody that you know you're anointed to give him the glory you're anointed to give him the honor. Come on, put your hands together. Shout hallelujah. Mary, Mary, Mary brings Jesus this alabaster box. And, and I want to take a moment to talk about this because this was not a bottle of cologne that you get from Dollar General. All right. The box and the ointment were extremely expensive. In fact, in my research, it said that the alabaster box was probably worth a year's pay. Now, y'all said, I didn't give the Lord $500 in worship. You ever give the Lord a year's pay? Mary brings a gift that is worth a year's salary. And she doesn't just hand it to Jesus and say, you use it like you want to use it. She breaks open the box. They said the box was expensive because alabaster was an expensive element. The box and the contents were expensive. But she breaks the box and she pours the ointment on the head of Jesus. And one text says she poured some of it on the feet of Jesus. Oh, God. Some of y'all don't even want to look at people's feet, let alone pour something on their feet. And if that wasn't enough, she took her tears and washed his feet. And then she used her hair. Now, some of y'all might have to take yours off. And I'm sorry, that, that, was, that, 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 that was too easy. That was too easy. Got 
got to go to Beauty World because I used my hair at church today. She used her hair to wipe the feet of Jesus. She's wiping his feet. Now, you would think that people would celebrate this type of sacrifice. But the disciples, not the Pharisees, not the Sadducees, not the scribes, not the religious elite, the disciples who said they love Jesus, they got mad and said, that's just a waste. Don't let somebody's judgment stop your worship. There's going to always be somebody that says you're just doing too much. There's going to always be somebody that tries to evaluate the level of your praise and the level of your worship. But they can't judge how you worship because they don't know your story. Oh, hallelujah. The only way you can judge me is you had to be with me from July 15th, 1966 until today, March 24th, 2024. But because you haven't been there, you can't judge how I feel about the God that I serve because whenever I I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. My soul cries out. I need some thinkers in this house. I need some thinkers that know the Lord's been good to you. That motivates you to lift your hands, to open your mouth. You don't know how much I cried. You don't know how many nights I stayed awake. You don't know what I've been through. All the hell I face. But I'm still here giving God the glory I'm still here celebrating God grab somebody by the hand tell him it's time for you to do too much sing a little bit too much Dance a little bit too much. Wave your hands a little bit too much. Oh God, shout leap for joy a little bit too much. Do it till you aggravate the mess out of the devil. Because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. You weren't there. You don't know when and you don't know where. But just rest assured that the Lord has been good to me kept me, provided for me, made a way for me, and I've just got to praise him. I know that's not everybody in here, but there's a few of us that just have to praise him, just have to give him the glory, just have to honor him. Where are those people? Open your mouth and give God the glory. You've been good. 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 Look at somebody and say it might be too much for you, but it's not too much for me. I know I owe God everything I give him. I know I owe God every ounce of strength. I know I owe God every thank you Jesus, every hallelujah, every bless the Lord. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. Has done a good work.
because Mary was celebrating the past, the present, and the future. She said, I learned something sitting at the feet of Jesus. And when my brother died, Jesus went to the tomb and said, Lazarus, come forth. And my brother is alive. But I got another reason. In a few days, he's going to the cross to die for my sins. How much I owe for love divine. How much I owe since Christ is mine. And what he is to me, I cannot tell how much I owe. I need a witness that is so glad that Jesus died for your sins. He was wounded for our transgressions bruise for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed every saved person in refuge temple tell somebody I'm so glad that I'm saved tell him I'm so glad that I'm saved I'm so glad that I'm saved where are the saved people open up your mouth give God a real praise cause I'm saved by his power divine saved to new life sublime life now is sweet my joy is complete cause I'm saved clap your hands shout hallelujah I heard the Holy Ghost say tell refuge temple no more bargain basement praise stop giving me convenient praise stop giving me easy praise but the Holy Ghost said praise him when you don't feel it praise him when you're under stress praise him when you're sick in your body praise him when you're broke what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me bless the Lord oh my soul bless the Lord oh my soul and all that's within me bless his holy name the Jesus said God is a spirit God is a spirit no more flesh in your praise God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth somebody on the inside that feels the Holy Ghost open your mouth shout hallelujah somebody in here that feels the Holy Ghost open your mouth lift your hands give him the glory I'm done Come on, stand. Come on, stand. insult you but if your praise is cheap God doesn't want it if it's just a praise of convenience God doesn't want it he said offer him the fruit of your lips and the sacrifice of your praise oh God I feel I feel like Isaac when he said father I see the fire and I see the wood but where is the sacrifice this is the altar it's the place of sacrifice but somebody tell me where is the sacrifice Sacrifice. Where is the sacrifice? Where is the sacrifice? 
Where is the sacrifice? Where is the sacrifice? If your worship has not cost you anything, it's not fit for God. But there's somebody in here that'll say, Bishop, I had to cry to give God this praise. I had to suffer to give God this praise. I had to endure hardness as a good soldier to give God this praise. The saints don't know what I've been through when I start running. They don't have a clue as to what I've been through when I start running. Because if they knew what I had been through, they would run with me instead of looking at me. trying to hold it together but trust and believe there's a story behind the pastor's praise there's some things I'll never talk about oh, she talking about. but the Lord brought me out and what was designed to destroy me to close but take somebody by the hand right now and tell them I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth my soul shall make her boast in the Lord the humble shall hear thereof and be glad oh magnify Oh magnify, oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt, let us exalt, let us exalt his name together. Now give God the best praise that you've got in your mouth, that you've got in your spirit, that you've got in your hands that you've got in your feet. Give God. waiters you waiting on your neighbor you waiting on your friend you waiting on your buddy but I can't afford to be a waiter the Lord's been good to me so I've got to give him the sacrifice of my worship of my praise I gotta offer him Thanksgiving because he's been good Come on, shout down your row. We can't afford to be waiters. Waiting on somebody else to praise the Lord. Hey!
stop giving God just what's easy. you if you praise him now God will do something else if you bless him now God will do something else if you glorify him now God will do something else Lord, I bless your name. Lord, I praise your name. Some of you are waiting on that next season. But worshipers are not seasonal people. In fact, a true worshiper, their worship doesn't change based on the season that they're in. Because they're worshipers. And because God has not changed, their worship does not change. Because God does not change, their worship doesn't change. In fact, people sometimes don't even know that you're going through until you testify. Because nothing changed. You lifted your hands when you were broke. You lifted your hands when you were sick. You lifted your hands when people were lying on you. You lifted your hands when you were in trouble. You lifted your hands when you didn't know which way to turn because it's constant. worship is not cheap so I won't cheapen it and make it about emotion 
My worship is not cheap. Cost me a lot. I watched Perry in a hospital bed, unable to move, still saying, thank you, Jesus. And I looked at him the other Sunday, and he drove himself to church. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. 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 Saints, this stuff is not made up. If you will honor God in every state of your life, I promise you God will take you through. I promise you God will give you the victory. I promise you you will walk in deliverance. Because if you want an unconditional God, you've got to become an unconditional worshiper. Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And if you want the kind of relationship that will make you a worshiper, lifelong worshiper, lifelong lover of the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to come and join me right now in this prayer line because God wants to change your life. God wants to change your life. God wants to change your life. And if you're here, my brother, my sister, and you want to need prayer, come on and walk this way. Oh, hallelujah. While you're walking, God's fixing some things right now. While you're coming, God is working some things out. While you're coming, God is touching, God is healing, God is delivering. While you're coming, God is moving upon you right now. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, let him touch you. Come on, let him touch you, let him touch you. Let him touch you today. Hallelujah. Use your faith. Use your faith. And let's expect God to do the impossible.
are at the moment of outpour. We're at the moment of outpour. And you don't receive with your hands closed and your mouth closed. Everybody in this house, lift your hands right now. And everybody, open your mouth right now in praise. And I promise you, God's going to get in the middle of that worship and start pouring himself. Come on, come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Just don't sit there. Just don't stand there. Say something to the Lord. Your hands are raised. Your mouth is open. Lord, I hear of showers of blessings. Oh God, as we offer praise, as we offer praise, Lord, I love you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I honor you. Lord, I glorify you. Lord, I magnify you. And I bless you right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Everybody that's receiving, just go ahead and shout hallelujah. Come on, go ahead and shout hallelujah. Oh, my God. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Anybody here want to make Refuge Temple your church home? If so, we open our hearts and our doors to you and you can come now in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey God, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 If not, let the deacons come. Let the ushers serve. If you need an envelope to give your tithes and offering, raise your hands and ushers will serve you. Their hands in the front, their hands on the side. Come on this side, Vanessa. That's okay, all right, all right. Anybody else raise your Woo! Give him the praise that he's worthy of. Give him the praise that he's worthy of. God bless you. Everybody prepare an offering to give. I told you this message was not about money, so I'm not here to start any lines. But if the Lord is moving on your heart to sacrifice in your giving as an act of worship, don't ignore the prompting of the Holy Spirit because I assure you that that is God trying to bless you. So don't miss the blessing. Don't miss the blessing. Everybody stand with me now. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your glory. 
I thank you for the worship of the saints. Now, Lord, bless the gifts that we bring to you. Sanctify in us a glad heart that we are glad to give. And, Father, bless the gift and the giver now. In Jesus' name, everybody shout hallelujah. You're in the hands of the ushers. Come on and bring your tithes and offering. In Jesus' name. you heaven smile upon you somebody bring me a bulletin quickly I need to make a couple of announcements I thought it was with my things but it's not um, we are in Holy Week from now through Resurrection Sunday which is next Sunday and I want to ask everybody to join me in consecration um, our fast day last week was the 20th this week I want us fasting Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and that is a six-hour minimum fast time. If you can do more, do more, but everybody try to give the Lord six hours in fasting. On Friday, we will have with us, we'll be an in-person. Everybody say in-person on Friday night. It won't be online. It'll be in-person, and our speaker will be Elder Ernest Stokes. He's going to come and share with us on Friday evening. Prayer time is 7 30 the service will begin at eight o'clock promptly i want to ask everybody that can and will to join one of our prayer times you know the one thing we do here more than anything else are prayer services and we do that so that depending on whatever your schedule is you can be in prayer because i believe it matters that the saints come and get on their knees and pray and so you can join us on tomorrow at 6 p.m is that the correct time Tomorrow at 6 p.m., Wednesday at 12 noon, Saturday at 10 a.m., or Sunday morning at 9 a.m., all right? The church is open at all of those times for prayer, and I would love if every member would make at least one of those prayer services over this week between now and Resurrection Sunday. On April 1st through the 6th will be the International Seminar and the International Youth Congress and they will both be held jointly in Norfolk, Virginia. Um, the hotel is completely full, um, so there are no rooms to be had there, so you'll have to have a room at a neighboring property if you're planning to attend. The first, second, and third is the seminar, which brings together the joint boards, the apostles, the bishops, and the presbyters 
along with the missionaries, the Minister Deacons Wives Guild, in their planning and their work um, for the international organization. Um, the Youth Congress will begin that Wednesday night with their pre-Congress service and will go through Saturday night, Saturday evening, um, for the International Congress. I need to see Mother Lloyd and I guess Minister Perry after worship because we have to prepare our reports um, for that. So I wanna make sure that we're prepared in that. I think the missionaries have already done their report. The Guild needs to have their report. If it's not ready now, they can send it later. But this is when we do a lot of the reporting for the International um, at the seminar, all right? And also at the International Congress. So pray for the Congress we ha and pray, pray for the seminar. Um, we have a vacancy. I don't know if I ever formally announced that. Apostle Matthew Norwood, who served the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ for over 70 years, is retiring from the Board of Apostles. Let's thank God for the labor of Apostle Norwood. A very quiet leader. He's made more than 50 trips um, throughout the, well, actually much more than 50 trips, 50 trips across the Atlantic Ocean to Africa, to Europe, to our churches everywhere because he has served as the apostle of global missions. And I believe if anybody deserves to retire, it's Apostle Norwood because he has given himself to the work of the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. So I need you to pray because the organization, the presbyters, the bishops are nominating in the um, seminar the persons, persons that they want to vote upon to replace Apostle Norwood. And, you know, elections ha always have the potential of being carnal because it's a popularity contest to some degree. But I'm asking God to make a, help us make a spiritual decision of who is needed at this time to carry on the work of the Lord in this season. And it will be one of our bishops. We'll have, we'll, there'll be several that are nominated. We'll vote upon those bishops in the convocation in July, and that person will be selected and consecrated and seated as the 29th apostle of the Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ to make out our board of 12. So be in prayer, all right? Be in prayer that God will lead us in that direction. All right, God bless you. Thank God for each of you. You can join us this evening at 6 o'clock for the gathering. Lady Davis is on a ministry assignment today, so please be in prayer for her that God would keep her and use her in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we all stand? And Geneva is with her. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank God for all of our visitors. If there's an unfamiliar face to your right or to your left, shake their hand, smile at them, greet them, wave at them, let them know that they're glad that you came to worship today at Refuge Temple. Everybody invite somebody this week to join us on Resurrection Sunday. Father, I thank you. And I offer the fruit of my lips and the sacrifice of my praise. I want you to bless, Lord, the people of God. That, Lord, as we worshiped, high places came down. Valleys were exalted. And crooked things were made straight. So God, bless us to embrace everything that you're doing. God, we pray for our grieving families. We pray for Janelle and the Rousens. And her, we pray, my God, that you remember Minister Carr and the cars that lost his grandmother. We pray, God, for Mother Bryant, who lost her son, Timothy. God, strengthen them, help them now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you do it, we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. Now the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance and grant you peace in Jesus' name. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Shake hands and love the people before you leave the house of God in Jesus' name.